Hey you guys, today I will give you a tour of my small shop. Um, I've been waiting to make this video because I wanted to clean up the shop and so it looks nice and pretty for you guys, but uh, I've been waiting and waiting and realized that might never happen. So I'm just gonna show it to you the way it is. This is how it normally is in my everyday life. So let's get right into it. I will start from that corner. Now, before I start showing you things, I'm, my goal with this is not to brag about the tools I have or anything like that. I'm just gonna show you the tools that I have and I'll be 100% honest with you guys and tell you which one I believe they're worth getting, which ones are not, what my problems are with some of these tools, just in case you are starting your own shop and you're looking for what will be the useful tools to have in a shop. Also, do not get your feelings hurt if I would say something about a brand that maybe you love or a product that you love and maybe it didn't work for me. I'm not trying to be mean or say bad things about certain brands. It's just, you know, that was my experience with it and... Um, your experience might be different. So let's start from that corner and we'll move around the shop and I'll show you everything I have in here. First thing on the list is this Giro 700 dust collector. This is from Harvey's Industry. I purchased this one after I saw a review from Stumpy Knobs and it's a fantastic dust collector. Really easy to change the bags. It has, let me bring it a little bit closer. Really easy to change the bags. Um, this door opens and then it has two compartments in here. This one holds the very fine dust and this one the bigger chips. The bags are really easy to replace. Now, I absolutely love it, and if I would have to do it again, I would probably purchase the same machine. However, there is one problem with this machine, and that is the little caps where the filters are, and you have to clean that dust once in a while. I don't know if you can see. I've attached this hose over here because there are two caps in there, two plastic caps that you're supposed to unscrew and clean the dust in there every week or so and those caps are completely busted they came not working properly so i put a different attachment so i can clean it i will show you what the caps looks like let me find them really quick so this is what the caps looks like and the the um, threads are just busted they don't work properly and i thought maybe it was just mine maybe i did something wrong so i purchased from them a replacement of caps and these ones are the same way they just don't really work properly so that's my biggest issue with the dust collector. Now, a second tool in my shop, it's my bandsaw. This is the Harvey, so the same brand as my dust collector. This is the Harvey Ambassador C14. Absolutely love it. I've had zero problems with it. The blade doesn't drift, it's powerful. It just works amazing and I haven't had any issues with it. Other than in the first week when I got it, let me see if I can get you in closer. The first week when I got it, I was cutting some tiny pieces um, and a piece got stuck here between the blade and this uh, plate. And then the blade was still spinning and it chipped a big chunk of the plate. So I contacted Harvey's and three days later, I had a replacement plate. They were really good. They answered the phone from the first time I called and uh, it's been fantastic. This is one piece of equipment that I'm super, super happy with. I did put a bow, um, auxiliary fence here you can see this guy it's a lot taller than the original fence and this fence you can attach it to any bandsaw and even the table saw if you have a job saw table saw and you need to resaw or have some more support these things are fantastic and it gives you a taller fence and it helps you to resaw a lot I'll put the link in the description below if you're interested I use that one all the time Next on the list is my drum sander. Now this is a fairly recent purchase. It's not um, just a regular drum sander. This is an oscillating drum sander. So that means when the drum spins, it doesn't just spin like this, it also moves left and right. And that makes a huge, huge difference. That means when you're done sanding with it, you don't have to hand sand to get rid of those lines. There will be no lines. It just looks fantastic. You can turn on the oscillating function from here with, you know, turn it on or off. So you can have it as a regular um, drum sender if you want, and then just turn it on for the last couple of passes to get everything smooth. 
With this machine, um, even though I only purchased it in December, a few days after I got it, it started making this horrible sound and something is wrong with it. I called Jet, they believe it's the bushing, even though it should not happen this soon. And um, they were very helpful. I do have to take it in, but the place is about an hour away from me. They said they will fix it. So I've been putting it off because the machine works perfectly. It has no um, snipe. It works fine. It just makes a horrible, horrible sound. And uh, I've been putting it off because I can't imagine my shop without the drum sander. I absolutely love it. If I would have to purchase again, I'll probably purchase the same one. Now behind my drum sander, I don't know if you can see it over there. I have four things of a fast tool. Some of those are sandpaper. One of them is the Roto six inch sanding uh, orbital sander. And then I have the Festool Domino. I'm not gonna get those out because you know what they look like. Um, quick impression on them, the Festool Sander, I think it's great, the Roto six inches. I feel like it's a little bit too big for the jobs that I do. It's a little heavy and big, so I never reach out for it. Um, I, however, I did use it when I made my daughter's desk or her bed. It was really quick sanding with that one having six inch and a heavy sander was really uh, useful. But for everyday jobs, I don't, really use it. I wish I would have got the smaller one. Uh, the Festool Domino, totally worth it. I know it's expensive. I know people hate it on YouTube, but it does do a great job and it works really, really well. As for the sandpapers, I only use the Festool uh, sandpaper with the Festool um, sander. Other than that, I like to use the Cubitron with my regular sander just because I feel it's a better sandpaper. Now over here we have the saw stop table saw. This is also a fairly recent purchase. I bought the three horsepower. Prior to this, I had the DeWalt um, job side table saw. And this thing is amazing. I really love it. It does take a big chunk of the shop. So that's my only thing, it's really, really big. Um, sometimes I do miss my compact table saw just because I was using the dado stack quite a lot of it. And uh, for this one, to change the blade to a data stack, you have to change the cartridge and it's a little bit more complicated. It's not as fast and easy. Um, hopefully, maybe one day I'll have a bigger shop and then I can put my compact table saw in and set that one for the dado and keep it as a dado stack only. But this is my table saw. I love it. I have no issues with it so far. Everything is working great. On to this side, I have my DeWalt planer. It's been working fantastic. I've been using it for the last year. No issues with it. And um, below I have a few table saw sleds. That's where I keep them. Um, everything, it's great there too. Moving into the router table, which right now it's holding all my laser supplies things. This is a router table I got from Rockler. And um, you can't just go purchase this table just the way it is. When I went there, I picked the stand separately, the table separate, the lift separate, the fence separate, and then I came home and put it all together. I really like it. Uh, the fence is fantastic. The table is fantastic. The stand works out great. Um, the lift, however, this is the Rockler SL. I did have an issue with it. Let me just move some of this stuff to show you. I'm gonna show you this just so if you have the same thing, you're aware of it. So the lift has all these uh, screws, I think you call them. You need to check them periodically and make sure they are not loose. This is what holds the router lift underneath this plate and the router itself. I have not checked mine for a year since I got the table and I've been using it heavily. And what happened, these guys came loose and because they were loose, the router was moving underneath and it got so bad, I didn't realize it. And one day I was um, doing some flash trim cut using this giant router bit, which I absolutely love. So I was using this to do uh, some flash trim cut. And what happened is I had a very tight clearance um, plate on here and the router started bouncing so much at high speed that it actually touched the plate and it cut into it and then it got looser and this thing was vibrating and my workpiece was, you know, spinning around and I panicked, I didn't know what to do. I didn't think of just pushing the stop button. I just ran away from the shop and I was like, oh no, bad things is gonna happen. 
but you can see how it chewed up this plate and I think it ruined a bit. I don't know if the bit is okay or not, but I'm not going to risk it. I'm not going to use it. I ordered a replacement and all of that is because these things came loose. Once I tighten it, once the thing happened, um, I came back in the shop. I, you know, unplugged it. I took the whole router apart. I took the uh, lift apart. I put everything nicely together. I checked for damage. And once I tightened these things, now it's working really well as well. So check for those. Other than that, fantastic piece of machinery. I also build for the router table. On each side, I build this bit storages and that holds most of my router bits, maybe a little bit more than half. I have a lot more some other place, but that's my router table. Now on this side, I have my lasers. I have my Xtool S1 and the Xtool F1. Those are the two lasers that permanently live in my shop and they both work fantastic. I love them. Everything is great with them. Now <laughs> I'm going to pan this over because you won't be able to see the whole thing, but this is where I store my lumber. I have small pieces, bigger pieces. There's stuff on the floor, lots of lumber everywhere. So that is my lumber storage. For the miter saw, I have the DeWalt miter saw. This thing has been working really great. I had it from the beginning when I started woodworking. I have no problem with it other than dust collection. It's absolutely horrific. Um, I'm pretty sure that no dust ever gets into my dust collector. It's just going everywhere but the dust collector. So that's my issue with the DeWalt. For the dust collector for my miter saw, if you can see it here on the ground, this is the DeWalt um, dust extractor. And this thing has two filters in it, a regular filter and a HEPA filter. It was super expensive. I bought it just for the miter saw and the hope that, you know, it will do a better job. I think I paid like 700 some dollars for it. And like I said, it barely collects anything. I have it on here for, you know, three, four months. And then when I go to empty it, there's only a couple of handfuls of dust in it. Nothing is clogged. The dust collector is working. I just, I'm not sure what the issue is. On here, I have the Pegas scroll saw. Uh, it's supposed to be one of the best brands of scroll saw there's out there. And when I purchased it, I purchased this one because I didn't want to buy something cheap and have it break. And um, I invested some money in the hope that it will last me forever. And little did you know, it already has problems. Soon after I purchased it, like more exactly three months after I purchased it, I don't know if you can see, I have a blue tape here because this knob here, the raises and lowers this arm, it gets loose. And as I'm sawing with it, this thing keeps spinning and the arm gets looser and looser. And um, it's not getting loose, it's getting lower and lower and breaks the blade. And it's just, I'm try, try to contact Pegas and um, it's been a nightmare. Um, just because of their customer service, I do not recommend that you get this brand. I don't know what other brands are there, what would be a good one, but I really do not recommend it. When it comes to senders, I have this oscillator sender, and this thing is just a WEN sender. I think I bought $200 for it on Amazon. It's full of dust right now, but it's been working great. I had it for a long time. I use it all the time. I have no issues with it, especially for the $200 I paid for it. Under the drum sender, you can see it holds all my hand planes, scroll saw blades, and all kinds of junk. Now on the floor here, I don't know if you can see it. This is my DeWalt space heater. It does a really good job. It hits this place even when it's really cold outside. It hits it really fast. It's not very efficient. The heat doesn't last if I turn it off so I can film because it makes a lot of noise. Really soon after I stop it, it gets cold again. So, but it works. It's been doing the job now. Now against this wall, I have the drill press. This is the when, I don't remember what, let's see. 
is a 12 inch variable speed model 4214T. And this thing, when I bought it, um, I thought it was great. Uh, it works just fine. It does not have a lot of power and I, it was not very cheap. I think I paid like $700 for it. And uh, I feel like I could have put a few hundred dollars more and purchased something a lot better. If it works fine for drilling, but if you use a four center bit, anything bigger than one inch, it will stall and smoke and struggle with it. And to that corner, it's a little storage bin for scrap wood that I built. It was one of my first projects. All the shop furniture, I built it myself. And then here I have all my parallel clamps or you know, some of them, and then a lot of little clamps hanging on my shelves. And over here we have my jointer. This is a small jointer, it's the Wahuda 8 inch. It has cast iron table and helicon head. And I absolutely love these things. It works so, so well. Now it is a small jointer. That means if you're um, jointing anything that is like over three and a half, four feet, it will become a lot harder, impossible for me. But uh, for smaller pieces, this works really, really well. This is my workbench, which you guys probably saw it many times into the videos. And under my bench, I have a sanding block thing. I have some chisels. Uh, this is where I keep my um, sander. I use the 3M sander, really good sander, but it's probably not the best out there. If you have the option between this and the Festool, I think I'll buy the Festool. And, and then I also have a palm router over here. I keep those under my bench because, you know, those are the things that I use very, very often and I want to have them handy. Of course, the crocodile wet wipes. I have a shooting board with the Veritas uh, plane. And what else? I, feel, I have a few hand planes I bought there for Christmas. I have not even opened them yet, but I think they're very, very pretty. Let's see. They've been collecting dust. Um, I'm gonna give you a quick peek. I have two of them. This is the bigger one, and then I have a smaller one. So, you see, very, very pretty. I have not tried them yet. I have not had the time. So those are hanging out in there. The bench, I built it myself, was one of the first projects I built. Uh, the vise, I installed it. One of the first things I did, I bought it on Amazon. It's been working great. Uh, on the bench, you can see here, this is a book press. It's for binding books. But right now it's uh, clamping one of these wo tiny wooden designs that I'm gluing to a piece of wood. This is what I'm currently working on. That in the middle is canary wood and the outer wood is walnut. And I'm gonna make this a lot bigger. I just can't really decide if the box I'm making is going to be a rectangle or a hexagon or a square. So I kind of stopped there for now. I made it out of these tiny pieces of wood that I cut with my laser machine. These are triangles. And I played with this design before. I have it here. When I first started woodworking, let me move you a little bit here. When I first started woodworking, I made one of my first um, side tables. I made it, uh, this is what it looks like. The same triangle pieces, and this is a hardwood. Um, at that time, I was not purchasing lumber. This was just leftover from some um, library beans that we covered with this uh, barn wood, hard pine, I don't know what you would call it. So I had some leftover, and this is all the same one species of wood. This is the age wood, and then this ones I sand them and plan them, plane them more, and it kind of took that aginess away from it, so that's why it looks like it's two tones, but it's just one wood, it's just pine. So that's what I'm working on there on my bench. Let's keep going. Now, this is another fairly new purchase, is this Festool CT26. It's supposed to be one of the best dust collectors, collect, collectors out there, I guess, vacuums. And um, I don't know, I had big hopes for it. Before this, I was using a rigid shop vac and I thought this was going to be so much more powerful and um, 
quieter and all this great stuff. But it turns out it does kind of the same job as my rigid. There is no, doesn't have any more power, doesn't have any less noise. It's just kind of the same. I, the reason why I didn't return it and I decided to keep it is because it does have this dust, um, this chip separator. And uh, I did use separators before with my rigid shop back. I was using the dust right separators and those were big, big and bulky and was taking a lot of floor space. So I think this helps with the floor space, but as much as quality, I don't know. I don't feel like it gave me what I was looking for. Over here, I have this furniture piece that I think I got from Home Depot. It just holds all kinds of, you know, screws, pieces, squares, so on. And this is my routers, drills, all the good stuff. I also build the shelves on the wall. I'm just going to give you a quick panorama. That it holds lots of beans and all those beans have jigs and tiny pieces and, um, my jigsaws and more routers and all that stuff. So those are the stuff that I don't use every day. So I just kind of put it there for when I need them. Uh, on this other side of the shop, there's lots of shelves with all kinds of junk. Uh, mostly on this side, if we look lower, this is all my finishes and CA glues and regular glues on the bottom. That's where I store them. There is my sawdust and splinter waxes that now you can purchase on my website. This is my apron. I know a lot of you guys are wondering if I even own an apron. I do have one. I purchased it from Artifacts. Really great web, uh, apron. I don't use it much. Um, feels restricted, but uh, I do have one. It's getting a little crowded here between my bench and the shelves, but basically on these shelves, I have an INCRA miter gauge. Behind it, I have the INCRA box joint making thing. And then I have tons of finishes and stains. Um, all the way, the bins down, they're all finishes and stains. I do have this grizzly sander. This bin is full of extra router bits. This is where I keep my veneers. Um, just normal stuff. On this side, on the bottom, I have a lot of Rockler clamps. In this box, I have a lot of disc clamps that I absolutely love. I have a lot of extra sandpapers for the jet drum sander. Um, in the back there, I have a jig for milling logs on the Bensa, which I have not used yet. I have a couple of router jigs. One is over here, and then I have another one on this side and my little sharpening tool over here. You can see it. I'm not going to move stuff so you can see it. And I have a small compressor. Um, those are my batteries for my solar, my Tesla batteries. Here is where I keep all my supplies for making my own waxes and oils. This is the Kurnuba wax I use, and then I use beeswax. These are the two brands I use. I make it with uh, mineral oil or tongue oil, pure tongue oil that is. And that's pretty much the tour. Um, if you want to see more in detail any of the tools that I showed you, let me know in the comments below. But um, like I said, I'm not trying to brag. This is just for you to see what's in my shop. If you are setting up shop and you're wondering what kind of tools you need or what are good tools or not good tools, this is my experience with my own tools in the shop. I hope this was helpful to you and you learned something new. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Kyler Ewing and I'll see you in my next video.